I've got uh, one of New Zealand's most loved musicians uh, on the line from his home up near Akaroa, and he's got some pretty big news for us about reunion gigs. So, hey, we have Jordan Luck on the line right now from The Exponents. G'day, Jordan. Magical Leanne, how are you? Magical jo- <laughs> Did I sound tentative because I was like, new equipment, first hour, but you're there. That's terrific. That's so good. Hey, I'm, I'm great. Where, where are you right now? Little River. Little River. Picking apples. Tell me about like Little River, because I think some people might not know much about it. Um, it's on, if you're leaving Christchurch heading east, you would pass through it on your way to Akaroa. Right. So you sort of wind fact, around those little bays and, and things. Uh, just prior to that. Right. Yeah, just prior to all the Banks Peninsula Bays, the Bomb Bay, yeah. Little Akaloa, um, Pigeon Bay. It's so, of bays, so pretty. Do you, you, you've been there a while, haven't you? Six years now, yeah. Mm. And do, is it um, like kind of convenient when you're gigging? Because you're still pretty busy, aren't you? You've got a winter tour coming up soon. 40 minute to the airport. In good traffic. Yeah, yeah pretty, it's not a, pretty good. Yeah, I mean, sort of across Auckland. <laughs> Bad tra- well, yeah. in good traffic. Yeah, exactly. So, Jordan, you're like, um, you're kind of, you're so loved and you're so gregarious and fun and, and you kind of don't ever really seem to age. But um, what do you, how do you, why do you think that is? Is it because you're still playing um, your music and performing? I think I drank so much that I pickled myself <laughs> and then sort of flipping, cryogenically froze and... Yeah. I don't know. Um, I think music certainly a useful occupation. Mm. Keeps you pretty fit, match fit. Although, yeah. having said that, this is the uh, longest break we've ever had. I think it's coming up to four months, just over four months by the time we do do, do a show. Yeah. And so we... It hasn't happened since high school. Well, in fact, it's never happened. Mm. And you miss it, don't you? Oh, flip. Yeah. Just not the, the singing, the um, meeting people. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and um, so t- you better tell us about this this little. T- we've actually we do have we do have a bit of an announcement, but we'll we'll keep people waiting for that because it's quite interesting about the exponents themselves. But but the Jordan Luck Band, it's a pretty big tour you're about to go on. Like it's um, taken in a lot. We of generally places. do yeah through about three months. Uh, so mid June we'll kick off through to early September. Yeah, yeah, flipping brilliant. I mean, the COVID thing. Uh, it knocked us back, especially when the Auckland, the Auckland one were in lockdown there. Mm. That was a big hit. But um, no, it goes mental. Yeah. And, and uh, oh gosh, I just, I mean, we were building up, we were on fire. And then the um, Omicron, January 22nd, we did the uh, kick down. Yeah. Um, Fong the Tailway. Right. Okay. That's the last show. Actually, you, you're often around those beaches in the sort of Northern Bay of Plenty, aren't you? Uh, we go everywhere. Mm. And a lot of <laughs> Man, new ones. so true. Places I would have thought, they're not on this tour, but Oda Matata would be one uh, up the Waitaki Valley there. Um, but Lugate or Lugget, that's a crazy one just out of Wanaka. Oh, you'd know it. Mate. And that goes mental. Lugate. <laughs> yeah. I have never heard Lugget called Lugate, but that's really, really good. I'm going to remember that. That's well, great. <laughs> Cool. There's about 70,000 70, new residents there, and yeah, just it's growing like like Terrace. Actually, um, <laughs> I um, have played there, and it is a fantastic venue because uh, it's it's so brilliantly set up. It's so quirky that stage, isn't it? Brilliant with a motorbike on top. Yeah, yeah, Somebody yeah. actually climbed earlier in the year. Yeah, yeah, they, for they, sure. They climbed the roof and then got on on board the bike. Who, who did that? Sorry. <laughs> Uh, a punter. A punter did it. Oh, really? Gosh. Yeah. Well, I suppose it makes a change from a scrap, doesn't it, at a live gig? <laughs> you know. I haven't seen those for decades. Oh, look, honestly, I talked to a mate the other night, and he was down somewhere in the deep, deep south, um, and uh, I said, how'd the gig go? And he said, oh, oh, look, it was really good. Massive fight at the end of the night, though. <laughs> and, I'm like, ah. and I'm like, well, that's the old days, isn't it? We've had a couple of tips with a handbag kind of thing, but nothing really serious. Oh, bless. Not, hey, like, not like the last century. Yeah, well, no, no. I think, you know, I mean, sometimes, um, even though no one likes seeing violence, um, some, some of those gigs, at least people are fired up and they're, and they're kind of into it, but it's just, it's just a bit too much alcohol normally is the problem, isn't it? Well, as I say, I haven't encountered it. I think there's too much excess all going around. <laughs> or, okay. Or, or, 
and possibly happier drugs. We, oh, we need, probably need more of that and less of, less of the other stuff, less of the booze. Then again, it's possibly the group. Could, and the music. Could be, exactly. Now, look, um, I, I, you've, had, you've said some really beautiful things in the past, like I read an interview with you recently, and you said you never kind of um, dwell on, on the past and um, or sort of have major regrets. But I wonder, does anything kind of worry you into the future? You know, I mean, and I'm talking very generally. It could be the world, could be musically, whatever, or personally. Big question, uh, sorry. Flap, you flap. <laughs> big one. Let alone f- philosophically. Um, do you worry about the state of the world, or do you worry about the state of the music biz, or, or um, whether you can keep performing, you know, into your nineties? Or <laughs> no, the 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 worrisome side I, I seem to leave to other folk. Yeah, that's good. Um, I just try and keep a balance of of. Uh, not being too happy. <laughs> of, of not being too happy. Yeah. Uh, you know, hey? like, oh, how are you? How are you? Oh, too happy. <laughs> how are you? Oh, too happy. <laughs> okay. Hey, do you think we should introduce another song? Because I've got a few lined up. And do you, do you reckon we go um, um, right back to the very beginning, hey? Because um, I saw you mention recently that Vic- Victoria, um, a lot of young people come up to you at gigs and say how much they love this and it kind of blows your mind a wee bit. Would that be fair? Oh, very much so. Although that happened, possibly we've been going about, or dance exponents have become exponents, and mm. w- this uh, ten years into the career, and someone came up and said exactly that, and I was going, oh, flat. Yeah. You know, um, and this year it's forty. Um, I 40. think it got released um, early or mid June, mm-hmm. nineteen eighty two. So. Astonishing. Yeah, well, you never really, when you write these things, you never really think, uh, well, back then, I never even thought it would get recorded. Uh, in fact, the band were all uh, pretty amazed when Mike Chun, he picked that song out of the set. He went, uh, Victoria, I'd like to record that mm. as your first single. And we all were going, oh, flat. <laughs> really? Because um, it was pretty unique. Yeah. It was the slowest song that people actually sat down Mm-hmm. went to the bar for um yeah but four years later it's yeah it's still relevant and and still loved beautiful yeah and uh by all ages which is so cool so let's play that one i do uh, worry about yeah. that actually domestic that? violence fab, it hasn't gone away fab, you have wives getting beaten up or girlfriends beaten up you go what the flab how is that still happening you know sure because i mean that's what the song deals with and yeah, and, and, you know, perhaps it's almost like it's, um, yeah, its themes are still really currently, still very relevant, which is really sad that that's the case, a, you know. On a bizarre note, um, mm. I did actually, we did actually have a request to play it at a wedding, and I was thinking, <laughs> not, not really. <laughs> and, it's such a romantic tune. Have you listened to the words? <laughs> yeah, do you know what it's about? Talking about Shane. But, um, yeah. The weird thing with Victoria at the time, and for a lot of New Zealand artists, was that you didn't really anticipate airplay and no disrespect to radio DJs of the day. But one of the reasons that was given, apart from the fact that it was a New Zealand recording, was the fact that the drums didn't come in until about two minutes or 30 or something. Or, and they're going, well, it takes so long for the drums to come in. <laughs> Down the track, uh, we still get that sort of excuse or reason for not playing New Zealand, for playing our music. And um, so with Who Loves Who, which is about 10 years later, yeah. I just went, okay, We'll just go straight into it. It's been bugging me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what they want, we'll give it to them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good on you. And of course, you know, it's, it's probably <coughs> your best best known song, really, isn't it? Really. Um, who loves who? Probably no. I'd probably go for. Oh no! Why does love? Yeah. <laughs> probably why. Mm. Although. Why call. not who? Yeah, we're all saying goodbye. That's up there too. Uh, it is. There's so many. You. There's so many. Are you are you still songwriter? Ba da 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 da. That was a big one. Yeah. For today, <laughs> um, wasn't it? Yeah. Without you, it's gonna be forever. Just more. That was another big one. Hey, speaking of that, Jordan, I heard that you actually cover that, don't you, in your current band? We have been playing it. Yeah, yes. the Mockers. Great song. Mm. How does it go down? Superbly well, yeah. cranking, yeah. killers. 
Yeah. yeah. Do, so, so sometimes you'll just sit around with the guys and say, "Oh, you know, let's um, let's let's pull out another tune and and give it our own, you know, slant." Stamp. Stamp. Yeah. Yeah. Stamp our individuality on it. Yeah. Right. And hey, now I heard. Um, I have a question. Are you? Is it true? Can you confirm that you were headlining the Alexandra Blossom Festival this year? We are this year. Um, COVID knocked us out for the one in September gone. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, so. But handsome Martin McPherson has us on board. So. That's so good, right? Oh, Flip, we're looking forward to that one. We're yes. looking forward to every show. If anyone has never been to the Alexandra Blossom Festival, when I f- first moved here, like a long time ago, I was kind of slightly bemused by all this fuss about the Blossom Fest, you know, and I, I heard a lot of, lot of hype about it. I'm like going, big deal, you know, it's a few blossoms. and But I didn't realise that it had all this, this history, and I'm sorry to the organisers now, because of course I've learned differently as we've gone along. And um, yeah, I've attended a couple of years, and it's just, it is a celebration, and it's beautiful, and uh, I mean, they had a few problems with, um, with a few chaps from Gore who used to turn up occasionally. Did you hear about that in the past? No. A few arrests and things. Oh, there were a couple people got a bit overexcited, you know, spring was in the air, and young men were... You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, a bit fired up and driving around in their big um, classic cars. You know, they all come, they all, you know, roar into town in these amazing old sort of 1960s Ford, you know, Ford whatevers and Valiants and um, it's, a, it's a big deal. So it's kind of like a, it's a, it's a big party, you know. But yeah, the Blossom, you know, so I thought it's this lovely genteel little, oh, let's look at the Blossoms. It's all very, you know, sort of, you know, have a, have a cucumber sandwich, but it's not. It's, <laughs> it's actually quite a party. And with you guys there, it will be a party. We did one with, um, it's called The Magnificent Seven with Peter Ehrlich, Eddie Rayner, Brett Adams, Dave Gent, Brian Bell, uh, Pat Coots, and we played the 50th. And I met, so that must be 2016, and I met Miss Blossom Festival 1957, I think it was. Gosh, she was a rocker. <laughs> what she, so Ooh. she, okay, so she, she wouldn't have been that young. But she oh, loved it. 70s, I guess 69, 70, something. Good for her. I think it's 50 good. years. I think would have been 18, 19, 21, I guess. Wow. I think, I think um, um, in fact, uh, hey, that must be one of the few places left that actually do have a uh, beauty competition in this country, wouldn't they be? The Blossom Fest. Um, Everything else is banned. Gosh, Caroline Bay, at least they must have been one. Um, yeah. yeah. But get ready for kilts for anyone who's turning. I just remember the, the, uh, bra, the pipe band. And flipping, that's massive. Yeah, and and a pipe band's a wonderful thing, isn't it? It's glorious. Yeah, I, I, something about the kilt, that that sound, it just gets me. I, I, I'm obviously my man. <laughs> yeah, it really does. It gets me really, you know, deep in my soul. It just stirs me. I, I think it's really inspiring. So yeah, can't wait. That'll be a great thing to look forward to. But I have a. I want to burst into that Bon Scott um, doing oh, yeah. it's a long way to the top. If you want to rock and roll. Yes. <laughs> Actually, do you know? <laughs> <laughs> let's, get, let's get that song in the playlist. That is one of my favourites. It's so good. <laughs> now, um, I'm, I'm going to go to another track now. And this is one that I, I believe you recorded the video in New York. And it's always been a little favourite of mine. I don't know if many people... I used to play it a lot on Radio Central. Um, it's called Sink Like a Stone. Tell us a little bit of the story behind the song. Uh, about my sister Tamsin and her first trip to New York so it's written from her perspective to a degree nice um, but no the video is actually shot at the um, are there Auckland railway station the old Auckland railway oh. station oh was it <laughs> I got that wrong right Kerry Brown no not New York at all he oh, might okay. put some New York images in the, some American images in it but nice yeah magical Kerry Brown it's, it's, it's quite a stonking little track. I, I like it. It's sort of um, short and sharp, isn't it? Say what you want, get out of there. Um, but Ted Clark blowing harmonica, harmonica at the end, that's what made me laugh. He's going, <laughs> pretty much a live recording, and it was like, yeah, boom, bam, 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 and, you, and your evil little Oh, laugh. yeah, that's... Yeah. That, we, when we were rehearsing it, it's Brian Jones who plays guitar here, but um, we actually learned that song in London, and... Hence the connection with my sister Tamsin and her boyfriend who went over and then it went a bit hazy after that. But anyway. Right, right. Um, we learnt the song. We're going, how do we finish it? And Chris Sheehan, he went, da, da, uh, 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 which is actually the brilliant, end brilliant. of Turning Japanese by the Vapors. You are so right. <laughs> That's another reason why we laugh. 
It is. <laughs> it is. Do you know that's so spooky? Because I was singing that song this morning as I was getting ready to do this. <laughs> and, 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 and in Japanese. That's synergy. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, I was. I don't I'm know. A I don't know why, but but I was on your wavelength. But oh, that, that's interesting, hey. So um, and so you mentioned Chris, and uh, you know, obviously, dreadfully sad when he passed away. And you, uh, and in the interview that I kept quoting, I'm sorry to do this to you. You did say that the worst moment in your life is, you know, is, is people you've lost along the way. And he was a really important yeah. guy to you, you know. Well, and um, Airway Spies was on before the interview. I was listening, and that's Martin Morris. Who, he's gone. He he went and died in Ottawa, I think. It was in Canada anyway. And he's gone. Yeah, and, and yeah. this is the thing, and you, you, you're still going, and you, and you look back, and, and of course, Chris, it was such a controversial appointment, you know, you had that, that when, you, when, you did, when you went a bit dark, and you were wanting to kind of almost be a bit, dark. bit goth, weren't you? You were like, we're too squeaky, yeah. we're a bit clean. We, and so, and actually, the next song I've got lined up is, um, is definitely related to that, um, sex and agriculture. So, the, it, is, it is true that the other guys, uh, Brian and, and Dave, were a little bit dubious about that, were they? At the time, mm, or, nope. Um, nope. Nope. what was what was kind of odd was that "I'll Say Goodbye" it had been the previous single, and we thought, "Oh well, if there's a fan base out there, this really, this really knock it." But it didn't. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it kind of everyone kind of went, "Ah, this is a bit," and also because Chris, she and he just stamped all over this one. Yeah, with that sort of industrial kind of clinking, clanking. It's just the pick up and plectrum up and down the strings of the of the neck of the guitar and it's yeah it's spooky it was, it was good choice it was a departure yeah I thought so it kind of popped into my head and I was like okay let's play sex and agriculture so let's roll it now shall we Shane thank you Leanne stand by Jordan and you're, our, you're my first guest and I'm pretty proud to have you inaugural <laughs> you're the inaugural guest that's a weird word isn't it in, in pop up in my life quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he was the inaugural. He was what? inaugural. So I he will. Was the, the, the inaugural. Oh, he received the inaugural. Well, you know, yeah. Well, it's it's good to be first, isn't it? You know, so <laughs> it's good to be first. We we um yeah we we we're broadcasting from Gibson, which is cool. And but you know, I want to say hi to everyone and all around the country and welcome along. And it is great to have your company. And I won't keep you much longer, Jordan. But I do want to ask you the exponents. You have an exclusive announcement for us, don't you? That you are actually going to be performing again as a band again. Correct. The it had been plotted the 40th anniversary, but COVID knocked that one out. Do, 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 do. So, yes, under wraps for some time, but so it hadn't actually been announced. But yeah, there'll be a tour through April and into early May of next year. Of next year. Allowing. Yay. Diseases allowing, yeah. Diseases allowing, yeah. That's um, a mm. good um, caveat, isn't it? And are, how are you feeling about that? Like, that'll be a, that'll be a buzz. Very excited. Well, we were pretty wrapped up really sort of you know 80 90 percent and i was kind of oh a little bit of trepidation but not really but um yeah very excited about it yeah would you do that last song do you think oh yeah oh yeah do those those three would be in the set actually four if, if Uwe spies was heard mm, yeah mm. yeah well, i think i think that's great and i think a lot of new zealanders will love that uh, you well, it's also dance exponents opening for the exponents. So the first set um, will be dance exponents material, and then the second. Set. So it's basically the 80s, and then the 90s follow. Nice, nice. So it will be it will be a musical. It'll be it'll be historic. You know, it'll be going through the decades and from the very beginning to to the stuff in, you know, recent times. And, mm. yeah, it's it's cool. It's a, it's. It'll be, I'm sure everyone will be looking forward to that. In the meantime, if they want to see you, the Jordan Luck Band and all sorts of places, I'm just going to read out a couple of venues. Like So, <laughs> the, so there's Takika, the Muscle Inn, what a place. Uh, Pukekoe, the Cozy Club. Now, th- have you ever, I didn't know you played at Cozy Club. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. South right of, in front of me. Uh, hey? There's probably a couple of new ones. Uh, I think the, oh, Fokanui. Because uh, yeah. that, that, that was one of those, even just Christchurch we couldn't do last year. Uh, but yeah, there's a couple of new new ones in there, new venues. Uh, San oh, Fan. Is Hongapuro on there? Hongapuro? Uh huh. 
Yeah, that's a really good one. That's the Parada um, t- Brewing Company. Parada? That's one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. Uh, para of. Oh, sorry. Pa- um, <laughs> this is para. very weird font in your in your flyer. Is it Paraoa? Yeah. Apologies, brewing people there. Apologies. They'll never forgive me. But anyway, yeah, check it out because you can you can find it all these gigs online. It starts on the seventeenth of June. So I'm gonna kind of going to let you go, Jordan, because I've taken up a lot of your time and I do appreciate it. Um, but I figure you've saved me from starting the apple crumble. Oh, mate. Oh, don't. You're making me hungry. Is that like what? You're boxes. making you're making it or? I uh, boxes of them and then you go in the freezer. Nice. Do you actually have an orchard around your house? Um, a wee one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, mainly apples. Yeah. That did well this season. Peaches were pretty good. Nice. Can't grow peaches down here, but um, definitely I'm, I've got apples coming up my ears and apple crumble is just a great way to use apples, isn't it? So Do you have cherries? No. No. Well, the birds get them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they do. do you, <laughs> so you've got, you've got cherries. Yeah. yeah as, soon as, as soon as there's a hint of red, they're gone. Wow. Yeah, it sounds, uh, sounds idyllic. Tried I, netting, but... Sorry about that, Jordan. What was that? Tried netting, but the birds, they, they see the net and they just go, oh, <laughs> we're going, we'll eat early. <laughs> <laughs> Cherry, there is a, there is a competition in Cromwell. Actually, you know there is the cherries grow down here well, don't they? Cromwell has a cherry spitting, uh, cherry stone spitting competition every year in summer, which is pretty cool. You know, maybe you can come That'd and take part in that. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to finish this uh, extended interview with uh, one of our faves uh, with jo- with Jordan Luck, and I do like I say, I so appreciate you talking to us today. And uh, it's the why song, Jordan. It's not the it's not the who. It's the Y one. So, would you do me a favour, please, and introduce this to our lovely listeners? You, you have been listening to Leanne Malcolm, the beautiful Leanne Malcolm, and coming up is a wee song called "Why Does Love Do This to Me" by the Expunges. Thank you so much to Jordan Luck for giving us his time this afternoon.